Back with Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, the 1910 Germany campaign, in the 1.03 beta. <clears throat> Last episode was a little long. We had a, a battlecruiser action with various supporting lighter ships. That went on for a little while. But it was a, ended up being a pretty decent battle. Battlecruiser performed well, if not very fast with its uh, reduced 13-inch uh, volume of fire. In any case, uh, uh, the one thing I did off-camera is we, we saw all the flash fires in the uh, Bremen-class light cruiser, and the primary culprit seemed to be picric acid. Um, so I did do a quick uh, design copy and this is the same ship. All I changed was uh, I uh, I switched picric acid to TNT, going from a plus forty uh, flash fire chance and flash fire spread chance to a minus twenty and minus twenty five. And then also I was kind of thinking uh, heavy shells on the light cruiser for four and six inch guns. Do I really need that? I took a look at the accuracy values. It was a very small difference. 4.7% uh, uh, base accuracy with heavy shells. 4.6% with standard. And given the kinds of targets these are really kind of intended for, destroyers and transports, you know, other light cruisers, yeah, I bumped that down as well. And so I don't think we'll be seeing from this class. I, I just made the design. I haven't built any. Don't know if I will. Um, so all of our existing light cruisers still have that vulnerability. But if and when the time comes to maybe replace some of them or one of some more light cruisers... I've got this Arcona class, which is really just a Berlin slight variant. It, it, something like that would be a perfect case of uh, a good situation to refit. And they've already gotten the button. It's grayed out. It's not active. It's not in the game yet. But you know, this shows that that at some point they're planning uh, a refit, a retrofit. Because really, we didn't. Need, I didn't even change the ship at all. I just changed its ammunition, right? Ideally, one could even argue that I shouldn't have needed even a re, even a let alone a copied separate design. I shouldn't have even really needed to retrofit the Berlins. You know, ammo should be something that's a little bit, you know. Just change the ammo. Ship's the same. In any case, uh, any future CL construction will be the Arconas, uh, the you know the basically the flight to Berlin's. Uh, it shouldn't be quite as vulnerable to that chain flash fire thing we saw in the last episode. All right, enough of that. On to June 1910. Well, we're losing transports more than the British are now. I'm not a big fan of that. It's only been six months. How's our... Well, we're staying above 100 with 100% funding. Up to 101. Okay. No battles this month. Let me just check the fleet and make sure nothing's over in the Baltic. Nope. Oh, no, there's one. Saxony is repairing at Palau. Everything else is in the North Sea. It's fine. Uh, so Kiel, kind of an interesting case. It's on the Baltic, but it counts as a North Sea port. So I think having ships based there is okay. I think. And it kind of makes sense. This line here, going from Kiel 
and joining. This is the canal, the, uh, the Kiel Canal, which Germany built in the very late 19th century during the 1890s, I think. Uh, it may have been completed maybe around 1900. I don't know. Anyway, but they, they dug this canal here to connect Baltic and North Sea without having to go all the way around Denmark so that they could reposition their battle fleet as needed versus uh, England or France in one direction or against Russia in the other. And so maybe that's uh, the rationale behind counting Kiel as a North Sea port. That said, if you move a ship from Kiel to one of these others, it shows the path going all the way around. It doesn't show it using the canal. But it's such a short trip, it's a one month thing either way. <laughs> but what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put two more destroyers at Helgoland, which fills it up. 1100 tons, so I can put four destroyers at Helgoland. Is there any real reason to? Probably not. But it just seems like a destroyer base kind of kind of kind of deal there. All right. June. Or rather now on to July. Now the Brits lose a transport this time, good. And we've got a battle here just off of Helgoland. And okay, 1v1 matchup, capital ships. And we're going to get our first look at the British battleship, the Revenge. That is the lead ship of the class, it's the Revenge class. And we saw that our battlecruiser did pretty well against the British battlecruiser. And now this is the final test to validate the uh, kind of pocket battleship concept I was trying to go with. Northwest? Okay. Well, the AI likes our chances. Go straight at them. <laughs> Meaning friendly AI. There we go. looking ship. Some guys can just look at the turrets and tell. I, I can't. I, I don't know if that's a 12 inch or 13 inch. Definitely bigger than their Battlecruiser's 9's though. Slow to cruise for accuracy. Okay, he's, I don't think he's running. I think he's just trying to maintain distance. Which the patch notes did say they had tried to improve. Okay, 8.4% penetration chance.
Okay. So we've got this thing identified now. 13 inch guns. Right. Almost 26,000 tons. 21 knots. Thirteen inch. I think that was three double turrets. Yep. But what's the? Um, okay. No. All right. Yeah. Mark three. Same. Same as mine. You know, it's also got a fair amount of nine inch. Four doubles. One kind of superfluous six inch. And a whole bunch of three inch secondaries. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, fourteen. He does have some torpedoes. Just four and a half though. No part port starboard. <clears throat> Standard propulsion at six point two kilometers. Looks like standard ammo. For torps, it is, but reduced gun ammo. How about armor? It's fairly, fairly well armored slightly lighter on the main belt but it's got a lot more uh, fore and aft than I do and a pretty thick that's a pretty thick main deck uh, let's see did he what did he do for okay crook one so he doesn't have the best available armor I think crook one's probably around uh, well, it's 1910. What what is what is my armor? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm at Croup three. He's at Croup one, so 72 percent. All right. Well, I don't think plunging fire is going to work because that's about seven inches effective main deck. And we would have to be 20 kilometers apart for a plunging shot to go through that. Well, 1910, we're not going to see each other <laughs> at, at 20 kilometers. It's just not going to happen. We don't have the we don't have the towers and the radars and stuff to do that yet. So given that, staying at a long range hoping for plunging shots is not really what I need to do. However, and those torpedoes aren't a big deal. He's got to have his bow or stern pointed straight at me for that to become a concern. And, and it's just the one torpedo. So I'm not going to worry too much about the torpedo threat as far as staying out of range. So what this could come down to is I've got the armor advantage. He has a volume of fire advantage with the three turrets vice two. But with reduced ammo 
it could kind of come down to just trading shots for quite a while and then he gets low because even with just two turrets he's got reduced ammo, I've got increased ammo I actually have more rounds than he does So I think we can just maintain, just kind of maintain this for a while. The odds are that I will come out the better for it at the end. There could always be a lucky shot that penetrates and who knows. But on average. And then as is typical with player versus uh, AI designed ships, I've got a significantly higher accuracy. Several times, yeah, more than once, I'll say, on these various patches over the past couple months, they've said, yeah, we're trying to tweak the auto design to make the uh, AI have better ships. And to some extent, I think maybe there, I can sort of see that in that kind of a lot of the designs don't look quite as outlandish as they did a few weeks ago. You know, you don't have these, uh, or not as many ships anyway, that have these outlandish turret uh, layouts and stuff. They still tend to pack on more than I think many players do. That said, I'm, I'm not sure that they're, when they say that they're improving the auto design, how are they improving it? Is, a, I think, a good question. I'm going to switch to... I'm going to switch to HE. Lousy pin chance. Getting a lot of blocks. and Of course, I'm probably still going to get blocks, but at least some of those blocks will start fires. Now he's going to get pins on my four and a half belts. I did not armor those very much. But he shouldn't get uh, any full... He shouldn't get many full pins on the main belt. But I, but I wonder how they are improving it. Because to me, what's probably the biggest AI autogen ship weakness is... Now, you can't see it on their ships because you don't get that full set of data, just what we can see here which is already a lot, but we don't see things like pitch roll and for uh, an aft weight offset. But when I've looked at autogen ships uh, in the ship designer for my own fleet, uh, I pretty commonly see excessive pitch and roll, like combined values of the two well over a hundred. In one case I had like 70 pitch and 70 roll on a ship that the ship designer had just put tons and tons of weapons on and they and they and the auto designer also seems to have quite a high tolerance for uh, some level of weight offset so you put all that together and you just wind up with an unstable platform that nerfs accuracy so if they're improving the auto designer, I, I think that's what they need to look at improving. You know, make make the auto designer shoot for like five percent or less forward weight, uh, forward or aft weight offset, and you know try to go after less than a combined fifty or even forty. Uh, pitch and roll. Yeah, just my opinion. Well, he got a pretty good pin there as I'm sitting there talking trash about his accuracy. Well, we're doing pretty we're doing pretty good ourselves. He's down to seventy two percent. We're at ninety one.
think there's a captain over there going, how is that Battlecruiser kicking my butt? With his two guns, or two turrets. <laughs> The gunnery officer is going to get sacked after this. Well, I don't really want to. Don't really want to get closer. I don't feel a need to, but I also don't want to turn away and flatten my side toward him. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of go this way. Although that's going to wind up having the same effect. Okay, I'm going to turn away. I'm going to be flat toward him for a little while. And I'm going to block my guns out momentarily. Actually, they're far enough forward. Uh-oh. I got a burning turret. That's not good. Uh, is that aft? No. I thought the turrets would be able to rotate 360 degrees. I didn't place them quite that far apart. Okay, that was superficial. No damage to the either turret. Let's try to angle away a little bit more. I think I'm happy to open range. A bit. It's down to almost fifty percent. Got some fires burning. <clears throat> and he's got some completely destroyed lower compartments right midships so if we ever get a, a flooding uh, penetration down there which actually I should check the pin at this angle uh, let's give let's give the AP a, a chance if we can get a penetrating hit midships he won't be able to dewater it And he's taken pretty significant propulsion damage from that already. We have two. I mean, he's got he's got 13-inch guns as well, right? Some of them are hitting. So we've got a predicted 16% chance. We've actually achieved 12%. Whereas he has, he's at 4.7 right now, but over the course of the engagement, he's managed 8%. But with more guns, we've actually landed about the same number of hits. And now he's running away. Turn back toward. And we're back to crap uh, penetration chance. Let's go back to the HE. I mean, it was working for us. not even firing back. It's down to 8.1 knots. He's not going to get away. I don't think he's going to repair his propulsion damage with those destroyed compartments being about where the propulsion plant is. Meanwhile though, I don't think we're fixing our propulsion damage either and this little bit of flooding here and here, we're not going to dewater that. He's getting his licks in too.
Oh, he's down to uh, yellow. So he's probably in save ammo mode. And at 2.5 percent, well, maybe that, maybe that's nine inch coming in. I don't know. No, he's firing. He's reloading 13 inch guns. Okay, we're getting partial pins. And that was a uh, partial pin, partial pin, partial pin with uh, and that's main belt. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to try the AP again. Ricochet, ricochet, blocked, <laughs> blocked. Partial pen. That's five inch though. And some of I think those blocks are probably five inch. Because well, I've got it on all AP. So even the 5 inch should be firing AP right now, which I wouldn't really want. I just want to make sure that the 13 inchers are firing AP. They really ought to separate that out. I know that auto is supposed to choose for you, so ideally mains, but I, I, I want to set that and be sure I know what ammo type my various guns are firing. I should be able to set main AP, secondary HE, instead of hoping that auto is doing it for me. Yeah, there, there was a pin there. It was on a secondary gun, though. Oh wait, that was me. <laughs> that was his shot on me. Never mind. No, partial pin on the main belt with AP here. Oh, there's there's some good pins. Yeah. More of that. There's a pin. It's got some flooding going on. Flooding that I don't think he's going to be able to dewater. There's some more flooding. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I didn't check his, uh... How's he doing for bulk... few bulkheads. I don't remember if I did max or mini. Sometimes I compromise with mini. No, max. I got max. Which is why this flooding here is confined to only one. Oh, there he goes. Okay, well, 13 inch versus 13 inch. We took some lumps, but, uh, you know, I think the design held up. So I'm happy with this battle cruiser being our, our capital ship. 2600 VP should probably be in the it's showing yellow Let's see if it actually gives me medium light light damage to Mars sinking a battleship and she'll be out for three months okay 
over in the Baltic. I gotta remember to move her back when she comes back out. Okay, I think that is a decent matchup. I feel like the design is vindicated or validated would be a better term, I guess. All right, I think that will do for this episode. I don't want to make another hour and a half one like the like the last time around. So thank you very much for watching.